Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Knowledge is also knowing that it isn't. Wisdom is not getting in semantic arguments on the internet because they're pointless. There's a lot of difference between scientific technical definitions and real definitions. My opinion has always been that the scientific one doesn't get to claim precedence. To put it another way, I think a strawberry should count as a berry because it's called a berry, regardless of the fact that technically it's a vegetable surrounded by nuts. This video isn't about berries, this is about bugs. What counts as a bug? Well, the easiest place to start is the technical definition. That's the nature of technical definitions. The order of insects known as true bugs is called Hemiptera, the half-winged. That's because their wings are half-hardened. They also all have piercing sucking mouth parts where the mandibles are pokey for piercing and the maxillae are tube-shaped for sucking. And the labium also helps with that. Now, that definition is not coterminous with Hemiptera, but it's a lot easier to list the typical characteristics rather than whatever DNA DNA signals are used in modern phylogenetics. That includes a lot of bugs, no doubt. Cicadas, water striders, aphids, assassin bugs, bed bugs, stink bugs. But that also leaves a lot of bugs outside of Hemiptera, most glaringly the lightning bug, ladybug, and june bug. These are all beetles. Coleoptera, the sheath wings. Their mouth parts are more familiar chewing mouth parts, and their elytra are even more hardened. Would it be so much trouble to combine the two of them as one definition? Well, maybe. Taxonomically, if you want to put beetles and true bugs in the same group, it would also include flies, wasps, and butterflies. But that's okay. We just need some kind of filter. So we can define a bug as any neopteran with a hardened elytra. On the other hand, do we really need such a stable definition? No, of course not. That's kind of the point of this. I don't need to spell out the definition to English speakers. I say the word bug, and it conjures up some idea in your head of what a bug is. And if you put that into words, it's not going to be some technical definition of taxonomy. But we're going to try our best. So let's try some of the etymological approach. If a word used to mean something, surely it still does, right? Well, like all three-letter animals that end in a G, bug is a bit hard to trace. But it's likely connected to bugbear and boogeyman. It originally referred to some sort of goblin thingy. Going all the way back to Proto-Indo-European, we have the root pe, which meant to swell up, likely related, at least phonostemically, to pel with the same meaning. This is the root that gave us ball, balloon, bulge, and belly, and less relevantly, Belgium. So with that in mind, we may want to be looking at rounder insects, which would put the ladybugs together with the stink bugs and leaving out the water striders. But that does leave a concerning extra, the stick bug, Going by strawberry logic, it doesn't make sense to say a stick bug isn't a bug, but perhaps there is an additional factor, and since we are being aggressively American English in this video, it's time to bring in a third definition, a creepy crawly. Creepy means unnerving, able to elicit a sense of creepiness. It also means moving by creeping, but that's also covered by crawling, and crawling also covers creeping by your skin crawling, which is the same feeling as creepiness. Given the immediately obvious alliteration, it also makes sense to bring in another word with the same font theme, crouch, and to some extent crooked. So that, well, that gives kind of the opposite of swollen, having long spindly legs. So I suppose that means we could define a bug as something fitting into either definition. But enough postulating, it's time to check out what people actually define as a bug. I sent a survey out to 48... Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot of people, but I just need the bare minimum. Point being, I put basically every protostome on that sucker and asked people to identify them all as insects, bugs, or creepy crawlies. Here are the results. Out of all of them, the only ones identified as a bug by 40 or more surveyed were the bed bug, stink bug, ladybug, the generic beetle, this image of a dung beetle was provided, a cockroach, and a pill bug. So maybe I was right? These all share relatively compact forms. I'm honestly surprised. I rarely believe the etymological approach works for this sort of thing. Over to creepy crawly, the term was used less often in general. That sounds about right. But the animals identified as a creepy crawly by 20 or more surveyed were the louse, earwig, centipede, millipede, ground spider, this image of a tarantula was provided, and harvestman or daddy long legs. None of them can fly except the earwig, but most people don't know much about the earwig beyond the urban legend of them crawling into ears, whether they believe that or not. We can also take a look at what counts as the opposite of them. I included a bunch of worms just because I thought people might call an earthworm a creepy crawly. So the arthropods that are listed as a bug by 25 or less of the surveyed were the bee, wasp, butterfly, and all non-insects. The ones identified as a creepy crawly by five or less of the surveyed were the bee, wasp, ladybug, firefly, butterfly, dragonfly, and the horseshoe crab. And all of them can fly, except the horseshoe crab. Let's ignore the non-insects for now. What I take from this specific division is that bug and creepy crawly are derogatory terms. That's something that should have been clear, but it also shows that we hold bees, wasps, and butterflies in some sort of esteem that keeps them above these vulgar terms. 
Other than that, my main takeaway is that people seem to be more conscious of technical terms than I had supposed. Most people were quick to note that they would use the terms mollusk and crustacean to refer to the appropriate animals, with the exception of the pill bug. Oh yeah, the pill bug is a crustacean. Did I mention that? It's a kind of isopod. Everything that wasn't an insect usually wasn't a bug, again with the exception of the pill bug, and also the tick in North American English, though I generally assume that's due to a misconception rather than active rebelliousness. And by contrast, creepy crawly is more of a dumping ground for all arthropods people are unfamiliar with. I find it telling that both the silverfish and web-weaving spiders, both of which are frankly very creepy and plenty crawly, didn't make it because they're well-known enough to not need the broad term. And only five people called a shrimp a bug. Shrimp is not bugs.